But I'd like to start it off by talking about Elizabeth Warren, folks. Yeah, let's talk about Elizabeth Warren for a little bit because, yeah, there are people for some reason who haven't got the memo about Elizabeth Warren. They're still operating on this on this uh, this idea that she's so super duper progressive and such a straight shooter and so reliable, and she's perfect for taking on Trump. Now I have no idea where they get these ideas from. I think they just pull them out of their butt cheeks, frankly. I'm not. I'm not. I don't see the evidence for it, but they really believe it. Edwards, they really believe it. <laughs> I don't know why. Now. I saw this like Friday. You know, now we all know, you know, my thoughts about different issues with TYT. You know, hey, man. Hey, hey, hey. I don't want to make calling them out like a thing I do all the time because that's not what I'm about. That's not what we should be about, right? We shouldn't be about calling out each other and calling out media. But what the hell? Sometimes it just fits. So I saw this on Friday. Emma Vigilant posted this clip, and I'm kind of torn because she asked a very important question, and I don't know why she didn't keep going. You were right there, Emma. I asked Senator Elizabeth Warren about her record when it comes to the military budget and foreign policy, which some from the left have criticized her on, I think, with, with legitimate cause. And uh, this was her answer. You uh, have focused a lot on progressive domestic policy. You also voted for a military budget increase in 2017. How does that square with your progressive politics when we're talking about foreign policy? If the question is, do I think we should cut the military budget, the answer is yes. And I'm now on the Senate Armed Services Committee. I've had this fight over and over. But there's another part to it, too. We need to stop the control over our defense budget that's exercised by the giant defense industry. Um, As you know, we now have a Secretary of Defense who spent seven years as head lobbyist for Raytheon. Um, I ask for some simple conflict of interest rules that he would abide by. For example, not to make decisions that involve Raytheon and Raytheon's bottom line. And he refused. Um, The Republicans confirmed him anyway. But this is what corruption is all about. Putting lobbyists in charge of our government agencies, a lobbyist, former lobbyist in charge of the Environmental Protection Agency. This is the heart of corruption. And the moment has come to call it out and to fight back. That's what being in this room was all about. Let me get this right, Stuart. You know, she's calling out Raytheon. She's saying Raytheon and the EPA executive. Uh, Raytheon executive becomes EPA official, and that's some horrible stuff. I definitely don't condone it. I think it's wrong. I think Donald Trump's cabinet is a catastrophe. No one here defends Donald Trump's uh, swamp uh, like uh, cabinet, the swamp cabinet, Loch Ness monster, the creature from the Black Lagoon. Like he went, he said, I'm gonna drain the swamp. He went and got his own swamp creatures and put them in the swamp, made more swamp, like continued to swamp. He's a he's pro swamp, is what he is. But I don't know about you guys, didn't really seem like Elizabeth Warren answered the question. Sound a lot like she was tap dancing. Sounds a lot like a typical politician avoiding the fucking issue. Now, I don't want to jump to conclusions because some people will call me misogynist, which they have done. But it sounded to me like Elizabeth Warren is full of it. But just in case on the outside chance that I've got it wrong, Edwards, let's play that one more time just to make sure before I tear her a new ass. I asked Senator Elizabeth Warren about her record when it comes to the military budget and foreign policy, which some from the left have criticized her on, I think, with with legitimate cause. And uh, this was her answer. You uh, have focused a lot on progressive domestic policy. You also voted for a military budget increase in 2017. How does that square with your progressive politics when we're talking about foreign policy? If the question is, do I think we should cut the military budget, the answer is yes. And I'm now on the Senate Armed Services Committee. I've had this fight over and over. But there's another part to it, too. We need to stop the control over our defense budget that's exercised 
by the giant defense industry. Um, as you know, we now have a Secretary of Defense who spent seven years as head lobbyist for Raytheon. Um, I asked for some simple conflict of interest rules that he would abide by. For example, not to make decisions that involve Raytheon and Raytheon's bottom line. And he refused. Um, the Republicans confirmed him anyway. But this is what corruption is all about. Putting lobbyists in charge of our government agencies, a lobbyist, former lobbyist in charge of the Environmental Protection Agency. This is the heart of corruption. And the moment has come to call it out and to fight back. That's what being in this room was all about. Yeah, smells like bullshit. That's what it was. I was right, Johnson. She's lying through her teeth. Oh, she's dancing through her teeth. She's doing some dirty dancing up there. Emma Vigilant asked you, did you, about your military industrial complex budget, yays or nays? And instead of even remotely answering the question, you proceeded to tell us how bad Trump was or how bad his cabinet is. We already know he's bad. See, this is the little sneaky way they like to do you. They obfuscate. They distract. Hey, Johnson, look over there. There's a squirrel. Hey, Lewis, check out that donkey flying. Wow, I think it's going to rain today, Sylvia. Never mind me. I'm just giving Trump more money than he even asked for to bomb other countries. But the real problem is we got lobbyists. No, your real problem is lobbyists. Our real problem is a lobbyist. It doesn't matter what the lobbyists say if you don't support it. You could always vote down. You, you don't have to vote for this shit, Elizabeth. Totally ducked it on foreign policy, too. I got a feeling Warner's voted for every engagement that she ever could. Yeah, that's what I think. I think people in Massachusetts know how you roll. And they keep touting this one thing she did with the FCC, and that's great and all. But what have you done for me lately? Well, guy G. Willikers, Tim Black. Gee, golly G. Tim Black. You really are a, 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 a fly in my ointment. You really are burning my butt with your freaking accusations. I'm a progressive, and I want here to up, I'm really up, up for the fight. Oh, the fight. We have to fight. Meanwhile, I just vote yes on everything and keep it moving. See, that's the real Elizabeth Warren, and that's why I say, and I've been saying, she is a wolf, a wolf in sheep's clothing. She is a Trojan horse. She is bad for business. Now, I know it's hard to accept it because it's like people really want more than one option. Yeah, I get it, you know? You want to say, well, I don't want to put all my eggs in the Bernie Sanders bucket. What if the bucket breaks? What if they take him out like they took out took him out last time? I get it. Or you say, I want to put my eggs in the Tulsi Gabbard bucket, but damn, they're locking her out of even being in the debates. They're, she can only get any play on freaking uh, RT or or what is it, uh, Fox News, man. They don't even let her, you know, whenever she's on MSNBC or CNN, they, they, you know, they smear her. So I got to have some type of outlet. I got to have hope, Tim. Well, you know what? There's no reason to put false hope in a false Trojan horse. Might not be a good idea to believe in somebody who's not going to actually carry out any of the policies that they say that they care about. And this is the reason why I say that. Yeah, she's got a lot of policies, and some of them are really good policies. So it's okay for you to take some of Bernie's policies if I ever thought you actually would implement them. But that's the thing. You can learn all the techniques you want, but if you don't have any foundation, if the people don't believe that you're actually going to carry it out, and hey, I happen not to believe that she's going to do anything she says she's going to do. We've all had lovers who said, I love you, and they didn't love her so much. So talk is cheap, and so is Elizabeth Warren. And as one of my commenters said, you can't say war without saying Warren. Or you can't say Warren without saying war. Yeah, that's the one. It's the other one. Now back to Emma Vigilant real quick, real quick. She asked a tough question. She asked a good question. Then that was the end of the clip, Johnson. There was no follow-up. There was no follow-through. 
But I want to applaud her because I know how it is, asking tough questions and the people jumping on you because you didn't do more. Elizabeth Warren just exposed Elizabeth Warren. In this particular instance, I have no problem at all with what Emma did. It's just my opinion. I'm not here to pass judgment or give anybody absolution. I'm just saying. She asked Elizabeth Warren a tough question. Elizabeth Warren ducked it like Neo in the Matrix. And I think you did your job on this one, Emma. Could you have went in for the kill? Yeah. But that's okay. We get the point. Even though all these things that I just put, put to you are true, you saw the clip for yourself, you saw the ducking and dodging ability, watching the episode of Dodgeball. I like that movie, Dodgeball. That was funny, man. Guy threw a wrench. Um... Elizabeth Warren would have did really good for their team. She, they should have called her in because she's a better dodge baller or dodger than. The thing about it is some people do believe Elizabeth Warren. And so far in the polling, if you believe the polls, I know some people don't believe them. A new CBS News battleground tracker poll shows a shuffle in the top tier of Democratic presidential contenders. Senator Elizabeth Warren has a one-point edge now over former Vice President Joe Biden, 26 percent to 25 percent. Senator Bernie Sanders is also gaining ground. The poll of Democratic voters was conducted across the first 18 caucus and primary states. Ed O'Keefe is on Capitol Hill. Ed, what's the significance of these numbers? Well, Anthony, it's not that Joe Biden is slipping. It's just that Elizabeth Warren is on the rise. The poll finds she's generating more enthusiasm among Democrats who now also believe she has a better shot than before at defeating President Trump. Hello, New Hampshire Democrats! Senator Elizabeth Warren earned an enthusiastic response at the New Hampshire Democratic Convention, where 19 presidential candidates spoke over the weekend. The new CBS News Battleground Tracker poll shows Warren edging out Joe Biden in the Granite State by one point. Biden maintains his lead in Iowa and is blowing away the field in South Carolina, where he has strong support with African Americans. But in Nevada, Senator Bernie Sanders is now in front of Biden and Warren with 29 percent support. We've got a revolution to make. You ready to do it? The poll also finds that Warren is picking up the most support from voters changing their minds. For example, 29% of voters who previously supported California Senator Kamala Harris have switched to supporting Warren. It was a rough weekend for Harris, who had to apologize after a man attending one of her town halls called President Trump's actions mentally retarded. And she responded with... Well said. <laughs> well said. Harris later told CBSN's Caitlin Huey Burns she didn't hear the man's full comments. It was not something that I really heard or processed or, you know, um, or in any way condone. That's for sure. Meanwhile, former South Carolina governor and Congressman Mark Sanford announced he is going to challenge President Trump for the Republican nomination. This is the beginning of a long walk, but it begins with that first step, and that's what I'm announcing here today. Sanford is now the third Republican challenging the president, but in a sign of how tricky it could be for them, at least four states are now planning to cancel their Republican primaries, saying that the president's popular enough with GOP voters. As for Democrats, they're getting ready for the next debate Thursday night when Biden... Wow. <laughs> well, those polls are kind of all over the place, aren't they? I got another set of polls to show you something kind of different. Let's show you that Bernie is a little bit more in contention and, and things would looks like a toss up between Biden and you know Bernie and Elizabeth Warren and it looks a little mixed up. So yeah, you know, take the polls with a grain of salt. Even based on just what happened with Tulsi Gabbard. Come on, man, they choose which polls they want to use. They can use more accurate polls. It can be a more accurate poll right there. And they'd be like, nah, I want the least accurate poll. Because it says the story we want, Johnson. Can't be going with polls that are better, but or more comprehensive, or tell a clear story, but don't get done the narrative we want to get done. Where is your priorities, Tim Black? And so that's the problem with it. Here's the thing. They say that Elizabeth Warren is climbing in the polling, and people are believing more in her, and they're saying that even people are leaving Kamala 
and going to Elizabeth Warren. See, this is one of the things, guys, I find hilarious as shit. See, Kamala, she's able to morph into all types of stuff. And she was able to take a shot at Biden. Now it looks like for her to get back in the race, she'd have to take a shot at Elizabeth. And if you can't call out a old white dude, you can't call out a white woman. I mean, I'm saying it's going to be harder. What you going to say? You know, you're both Indian. I mean, <laughs> there's difference, I understand. Elizabeth's neither. My point is this, guys. I don't see, <laughs> I don't see Kamala getting back in this thing. And Elizabeth Warren, even though, even if they say, even if you believe the polls and say, you know what, she's doing so good, Tim Black. I don't know what you're talking about, Tim Black. The bottom line is, uh, I don't think Elizabeth Warren could beat Donald Trump. And when it comes down to it, with all the fabrication that they're doing in the media to make Elizabeth Warren look like she's tough, I got a feeling during these debates that are about to come up on Thursday. You're going to see just how untough Elizabeth Warren is. At the end of the day, if the Democratic Party wants somebody to beat Trump, they say that's the number one thing. We got to have somebody to defeat Trump. Mm, I got a hard time believing that there are enough Democrats that are that damn stupid to think Elizabeth Elizabeth Warren can beat Trump. I don't want to say you've been smoking too much weed because who's to say what's too much weed, right? Some people say there's no such thing. But I got to imagine you realize that Hillary was tougher than Warren. I mean, she managed to stay married to Bill Clinton. She laughed at death and dead babies and men being gang raped. She laughed at it. She, she, she threatened to kill scores of people. You really think Elizabeth Warren was more of a fighter than Hillary Clinton? Come on, man. I mean, come, I mean, I know people like, look, look, guys, come on, man. I mean, I'm just keeping it real. Hillary Clinton was pretty tough, and she got her butt kicked. What? And, oh, now you think somehow people are going to be more inspired by, nah. We could stay on this all day. The bottom line is, I don't believe it, and I like I, I'm you know I'm willing to be convinced. Convince me, Johnson. Convince me that Elizabeth Warren is tougher, more durable. It's going to be a better debater. It's going to take down Trump. All of the raggedy voices, all of that trembling voice, is not going to deter Trump in one bit. I can't believe people think it would. The math teacher, whatever she is, the, 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 the history teacher is not going to go in and defeat the orange salesman, the orange snake oil salesman. It's not going to happen. Master of ceremonies. The magician who makes the middle class disappear and more rich people appear, who are already rich, who just got richer. That's all. That's, that's it. No new rich people, just rich people that were already rich got richer. For my next trick, Johnson, I'm going to make the rich get richer and the poor get poor and have a bunch of dumb poor people cheer for it. And my next trick, Johnson, I'm going to make people vote against their own best interest. 